What's up guys? It's Connor from Out of Work Outdoors again. Today we're talking about hollow belly frogs. We're actually all frogs. And the reason why we love frogs is it's what got us into the bass world, into the tournament world. A uh, little backstory on that. If you know the channel, the channel is basically a, a striper white bass hybrid channel for the longest time. And then we started transitioning, especially this year, towards bass fishing because there's a pond kind of in our backyard. Uh, that's actually a neighbor's pond that is, uh, somebody stocked it with three, four, five pound bass. And there's like 20 of them in there. And for the longest time, people couldn't figure out how to catch them. And one day we went out, we bought a Strike King KVD frog in the natural green color. And we threw it out there and we caught one. And that's really kind of what started the whole bass fishing world for us and uh, I'm just here today trying to show you guys a couple of frogs that we like and maybe it'll open up your eyes a little bit towards the world of frogs uh, everybody's pretty much familiar with the Spro and the Strike King frog because those are the most in my opinion the most general designs and they work just about everywhere but there are times where where I've seen where uh, they want a different action or they want something that's just completely different and also there's some pitfalls of that design where other lures have picked up on and improved so I'll show you to get started this is the lure that uh, we're pretty much started for us um, so Kevin it's the Strike King KVD Sexy Frog um, not this actual one but this one did win one tournament as well for my brother hybrid killer and the very first year he fished tournaments he did not know basically well, what to do so I me and him were talking and I was like man just do what you know how to do you know, don't even throw sinkos don't even throw anything else throw flukes and frogs that's it and he basically went out there with two rods now our arsenal is really ridiculous uh, by some people's means but the first year, his first year, all his tournaments that he fished, they were all from late spring to early fall. And every, you could say 50% of his tournaments won on frogs. And the tournaments I'm talking about is the, um, the Tuesday nights jackpots where it's a big bass tournament. And one, bites, one bite can mean you win. So in those type of tournaments, a frog is a really good lure to throw. And he also won a, well, a kayak tour level event, you could say, a tour circuit event in the, uh, in the state on a frog as well. And that was one that was fished during late summer. Also on a frog, also on a KVD frog. And it was an all white one. And that kind of leaped a little bit to the colors. See, this is more of a natural color. It's got all these cool spots and everything. Tail, I mean legs. But really, you know, as a beginner, I recommend a white. A white or a black. And then once you get a little bit used to it, you might get a unique color. And unique color is really up to you. Don't listen to anybody else. Unique is you. You are unique. So pick a unique color that you have faith in. Whether it's a natural or it's like a red. Sometimes it's good to throw a red because no one else is throwing it. So, so that's our very, very first introduction to frogs. KVD Sexy Frog from Strike King. And if you guys are looking at uh, places to buy these lures, we'll have them in the annotations and we'll definitely give you guys the best prices on where to get them. And everywhere we look, it's always cheaper online and it's always going to be cheaper either on Amazon or on eBay. So we'll have those links below. Just click on it and you'll find the best prices. And that's how we get a lot of our frogs too. So, striking, uh, that lore really started off for us. And we made a lot of mistakes on the way there. Uh, first mistake was throwing it on a rod that was too light and throwing it on 12 pound fluorocarbon. You don't want that. Basically, if you're going to throw these frogs, I'm going to mention now, this is from trial and error, this is what we've come up with. You want a rod that you can consider is really heavy. Uh, heavy action. Not stiff like a stick that won't bend, but definitely a little bit of bend in it. But it's, it's got to be a heavy action rod. Uh, 
and it's got to be able to throw that 65 pound braid. It's got to be on a 7 or 8 gear ratio reel, okay? That's the key, and I'm not going to put specifics on reels or rods because there's a lot of them out there, and if you guys really want to know, then we do have three different setups that we usually go with. So if you want to know, uh, leave a comment below, and maybe we'll actually bring out those rods and show you guys. So the second type of frog is very similar to the first striking, but this one's a little bit different. This one's the one from Spro, and the reason why I like this one is because it's got more of a color choice, and it's slightly sharper at the front end. So when you're, this is a this is a frog that I like to uh, fish real fast, the Spros, and that's the reason why I like it. The, the striking to me is more of like a good all around. This one's a frog that I like to throw and skip and things like that, and retrieve really really fast. So that's the Spro Bronze Eye Frog. And this is actually a pretty cool color too. Remember I told you uh, either white or black? Well, what if you can't make up a choice? You get a frog that's white and black. <laughs> black belly, white top, halfway through it turns white. That's one of my favorite colors, by the way. So that's a good color to have if you don't know which one to buy. Um, but with all frogs, you're going to have to have pretty much... The two most popular designs is a frog that looks like this, kind of like a boat, like at the bottom of it, shaped like a boat. Or you got a frog that's got a mouth on it, okay? This is like the second most popular frog design. This one's actually from Terminator, and it's a popping frog. I started using this one because I'm able to walk it really good too. And most frogs are going to want to walk, so you're going to have to learn how to walk the dog. But this one spits. And it walks a lot really well. A lot of the popping frogs will pop, but they won't walk very well. This one is actually managed to fix that problem. So that's why I throw this one up. And let's see. And this is a cool frog that not a lot of people talk about. But this is Isha's Fat Frog. I think it's made by Snag Proof. Most of these frogs, including the Strike Kings and the Spros, after you fish them away a little bit, maybe 10 casts or so, they'll start, they'll start to get water inside of them, so you have to squeeze them out. And a lot of people do that. That's why you see a lot of frog fishermen always squeezing their frogs. Problem solved with the Ish Frog. The Ish Frog has another like tunnel where the hook and the attachment points go through, so there is never water in the belly of the frog. Well, I, I say that, but you might just squeeze this maybe once every 100 casts. Or 200 casts for that matter, compared to every 10 casts on the other ones. So the Ish Frog solves that problem. And on top of that, the feet is coming straight out the back. And it doesn't do that V like most of the frogs. So that's another cool design that I really like. And on top of that, this is the popping version. And instead of having one mouth in the front, it's almost like got like two gill plates. Two diverting plates on the side. And it spits a lot more water. The... the it spits water to the side instead of spitting your water forward. So that's a different design that not, not a lot of frogs have. So that's pretty cool. And once again, my favorite color is black. Um, and then there's always these guys. This is, I forgot what the name of it was, but I'll annotate it. But it's one of those frogs. It's still a hollow belly, but it's got tails on it. Well, kicking, it's got kicking legs on it. This is a frog that's designed to be thrown and just straight real retrieve. It's like one of your um, toads. It's almost like a toad, but it's still a hollow belly frog, and I like that. Because when you when you uh, um, burn it over grass, and when you get to the edge, it slowly sinks. It doesn't just sink like a rock like most toads. So that's a pretty cool thing. And on top of that, it's got two hooks. Okay, it's got two hooks on it. Compared to most toads, you might still have two hooks, but it's just for some reason I get better hookup ratio on this because this is collapsible. And most of your toads out there, they're not collapsible. So that's a big plus. And that is another cool design that a lot of people overlook when they're talking about frogs. And this is a cool one too. I consider this a frog as well. And we've reviewed this on the channel. But this is a lure from overseas and that they use for snakeheads in Thailand, which is really popular. And I don't see nobody talking about this. 
is basically a frog's head carved out of wood. And then you got some skirt material, and then you got a small frog hook on the back. It's a very strange design, very unique design. It is a smaller profile, and most people will think that you cannot catch fish on the small profile. But th that is far from the truth. This lure, I, it's usually not my first go-to. Because one, it doesn't cast very far. But I use it when like I'm going through an area. Going through an area that I know that other anglers have already fished. And that's where this one really shines. It's a very, very, very finesse frog. It almost doesn't even make a wake on the surface. It's one of those things you want to fish around like standing timber or uh, standing like coontail, things like that. Not over the messy slob because this won't make enough uh, commotion for you. And last, no not last, but these are, I'm starting to get more and more of a unique lures as I'm talking about this. And this is definitely one of them right here. This is the depths from, as you can see, the body of it is completely different from other bodies. It doesn't have legs that go to the back. This has legs that goes to the front, almost like suicide legs. And instead of two hooks on both sides, it only has one. And it's got a hard belly, but a real soft top that collapses really, really easy. This lure, when you retrieve it, it's more of a, a walking action. You don't really need a jerky, you just slowly retrieve it. It kind of does that action as it goes across the top of the water. Another good alternative that hardly anybody ever throws. So I can just I consider that kind of like a secret weapon, you know. Um, but so that one's from depth. That one's pretty pricey. I think it's like twenty bucks. So that's a genie lure, by the way. All genie lures are pretty expensive. And then uh, let's see. This is another one that is really cool that I've caught a lot of fish on. And it, it has kind of, I don't know why it hasn't really caught on. I don't know why, but it's really cool. Or it's the frog from Sabeel. And all the other frogs that I've mentioned, in one way, shape, or form, the bass or whatever fish you're trying to catch, it has to collapse the body. Like, it has to collapse the body to expose the hooks. So when you pull it, the hooks can actually jab up and get them in the, hook, the roof of the mouth. So Beal has fixed that problem immensely, I think. What they have is a frog with a massive single hook on it, okay? You can kind of see it like that, okay? But what they've done is it's keel weighted and the hook sits on top of the frog's butt. But the thing is, there's a big gap. It's like a big EWG gap. When the fish hits this, it'll it'll push the hook up. And now you have a really, really wide gap up here to uh, to set them on. My only, my only uh, thing I don't like about this is I think this hook is t a little too beefy. Tone it down just a smidge and you'll think it'd be better because... I think this hook, you really, really, really got to slam on them. And at long ranges, even with braid, I think it just does make perfect penetration every time. So that's my only critique on it. It's a cool design. If we can fix that little part, I'd have nothing but this. And that's that's really speaking truth, too. So that's a Sabeel frog. Pretty cool lure. Pretty cool. Pretty genius design. Now, the latest one that I've gotten into is another one that no one talks about and this one's a weird ugly one and you guys have seen it before it's called the strike king kvd poppin perch and it's huge it, this is a big this is, is definitely a big bass lure and i've actually caught more fish on this in open water than over pads so that that's huge give you a comparison that and the original Strike from the frog, okay? It's like that. Okay? It's huge. Huge profile. It's gonna attract big big fish basically. I threw this in one of my videos, uh, I'll annotate it somewhere. Uh, we caught two fish, one was like six pounds, and the other one was three pounds fourteen ounces. It had a frog, small mouth. Crazy, isn't it? But yeah. It's the cool thing about this is it's really not a it's like a popping frog but really at the same time it's kind of not because of the way it's 
design and the way it's painted it looks like a perch on top and on the bottom instead of on the side to side like your frogs are like for example see this the sibyl frog oh yeah you know that's a frog for sure right but when the fish is looking at it they don't really see anything they only see white white bottom but this one's different looking at it on the bottom you can see it's fully colored it looks like a fish. It's got eyes and gills on the bottom of the lure. I think that's one of the reasons why they like it. They can see it in open water. And that's what I think this was really good at. You know, standing timbers, lay downs, or open water. That's where this popping perch is coming in. It's gonna, it's gonna come in to play. So, those are definitely our, uh, our favorite frogs. There's a couple other ones that uh, we have, but we haven't had a lot of success with. And those include the live target uh, perch or bluegill. It's pretty cool design. It actually walks really good, but I just haven't thrown it a lot because it doesn't cast very far. By design, I think it just doesn't cast really far. It swims. I mean, it dodges left and right really, really well. Uh, because of the design of it, it's kind of got a, like a cup design, so of course it's going to do this action very well. And it does, I give it that, I just haven't thrown it as often as maybe I should. So that's a pretty cool one. But that pretty much, that pretty much racks up the uh, frog uh, video for us. And those are definitely the frogs that we will throw. What, as soon as the water temp hits about 55, all the way until the water temp comes back down to 45 so no not 45 55 55 55 the frog if you're looking for a big bite throw a frog i don't care how dirty the water is how windy it is how clear it is there's always a frog for that application so if you're looking for that big kicker fish which is what uh which is what we do during tournaments after you catch four or five small ones looking for a kicker fish you don't know where to go just take a frog and just burn the bank with a frog. Uh, burn it as fast as you can, pretty much. Pop it, walk it. Bass will come out of nowhere and smoke a frog burner. If you throw them a crankbait, they might not do anything because they see it a lot. And if you throw them like a buzzbait or something, if the sun's out, they won't even touch it. But for some reason, they'll hit a frog. And the best conditions to fish a frog, or the funnest time to fish a frog, is when in like midsummer and things are matted over. Throw a frog. I don't care like how deep the water is, that much or that much. Fish, if the fish are underneath the, uh, the, the, the grass, they'll hit a frog. And what I do is I just basically fan cast areas. Go out to a grass mat and just fan cast. And I always want to hit the bank and pull it off the bank. Or sometimes I want to actually cause a big splash on top of the... Uh, on the grass, a lot of a lot of times when you're fishing, you're kind of conditioned to like not making splash splashes on the surface of the water. But if it's matted, I I sometimes I'll throw it up where you at intentionally, so it'll go like 30 feet in the air and it'll land in the grass and cause a splash. I think it attracts the fish from like 20, 30 feet away to come to the area to investigate. And you gotta just give it two, three seconds and start working it. You work it kind of slow back, and if there's a bass in he'll smoke it. He'll come through the grass to take it. So that's that's my tip for the week, and that's my frogs. And like I said, uh, these frogs have it all started with the Strike King, and now we've migrated to all these other frogs. So if it's like a, a frog and bite that day, pretty much I put away all my other rods, and I'm on a frog bite. If I'm on a frog bite, I will throw it all day. And I don't really care. I love I love the top water bite, so I'll throw it all day. I'll have four rods rigged up for frogs and go to town basically. But that's how that's how our fishing career, if you want to call it a career, or fishing hobbies more like it. Uh, that's how it started for us for the bass fishing world. Started with the ponds, throwing frogs, then you started throwing them at the lakes, throwing them at the rivers, throwing them during tournaments, during all the tournaments. And even through them during the Lake Fork tournament at the Tournament of Champions in 2016, and we caught some bass on them too. So that's how much we love frogs. We love top waters. 
And like I said, make sure the equipment is there or else you're gonna hate yourself because there's two giant hooks for the most part that you're trying to penetrate and you cannot penetrate that. You, can't, you just cannot put enough force on those needle points to go through the, the, the hardest part of the fish's mouth too. You just cannot put enough pressure if you're not on brain. So put it on 65 minimum and set like, like there's $10,000 on the line. Set them as hard as you can. The drags have to be locked down and you're just cranking, okay? Crank, 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 crank. And I don't care how big this fish is, whether it's 12 inches or six pounds, you crank like, like there's $10,000 in the line. You get him to the boat. If your buddy's there, he's not ready with a net, you boat flip it. And that's how you fish a frog. I love fishing in this way. I love the power fish with a frog. And so does Hybrid King. That's how, that's how we fish a frog. And we've been pretty successful with it. So I hope these tips help you guys out. And like I said, if you like any of these frogs, we'll have all the, we'll have all the links on down below in the comment section on where to go find them. And if you buy it, it helps us out. So any questions, leave them down below. If uh, if this video is opened your eyes a little bit to frogs, then uh, click the like and share with a buddy. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. More of this style of uh, videos are coming out every week. We'll try to do as the best we can. I know right now it's the off season, so we can do this type of stuff. Uh, once the season starts, then we'll have more of a tournament coverage of how we do. Maybe introduce you guys to some of the locals. Uh, we could probably even do like a kayak uh, intro and things like that. So. Keep it locked in, and we will show you uh, the 2017 season and how we do. All right? See you next time.